Glory to God. Man of God, I thank you so much once again for this opportunity. Mama, thank you so much for approving it. And I thank the leadership of the church. Wow. Why? Go glory, glory, glory. If it's like this on earth, I wonder what will happen in, in the, when we're in the presence of the Lord. Amen. To be so excited. Glory be to God. Uh, like we speak uh, this morning, uh, we share a word that I believe that uh, the Lord has spoken through the Holy Ghost. Uh, last, last week, we are privileged to usher into a new season of life by the father of the house. He declared words, understanding, time and season, taken from the book of First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. And we are blessed. When, he, when we spoke about understanding time and season, it doesn't mean that God is slow in doing his things. But I, for me, I understand that God has a different strategies in a season to do something. Whatever God did, he did on his own will. He know the best time. And whenever he wants to move, he distracts the enemy. So one of the ways that I understand it is that when God did something, when he was about to take the, uh, the children of Israel out of the slavery into the promised land, he uses Moses with a different strategies. He uses the rod of Moses to pack the Red Sea. Then when it comes to uh, 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 Joshua, in the book of Joshua, chapter number 10, verse 14, it said that Joshua spoke and the song stood still. The Bible said that God has not honored anybody's word. Reason was that God did not give uh, Joshua instruction to stop the song. But he exercises authority. He understood the power of the word. When he spoke, God understood because God was with him, fighting for him and fighting for the children of Israel. The same way that God is fighting for us. He honors our words. Then when it comes to King Jesus, which the man of God spoke last week, when a man has an encounter with Jesus at the pool of Bethsaida, Jesus spoke a word. Even though that the man doubted the word of Jesus, he said that when Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? He said that nobody is here to help him. No one is ready to help him. I believe that when he's struggling, when the angel come down to steal the pool, when he's struggling to get in, some people will push him back or some will set, put their leg, not, not for him to get into the pool. Why they get into there? But Jesus said something. He said, man, pick up your mat and go home. The power of words. Pick up your mat and go home. And that brought me to our message this morning tied to advance in life through your words. Hallelujah. Amen. Advancing in life through your words. Turn to your neighbor, say to your neighbor, my words are power. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We are taking our scripture reading this morning from the gospel of Matthew chapter number 12. Verse 36. Are you there? We are reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, But I say to you that for every idle word men shall speak, or men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Hallelujah. We know that uh, in English, we not begin a sentence or we not start a sentence with but. That means Jesus was sharing something with the, his disciples before he get to this verse 36. When we study from verse 31 into verse 37, it will help us, it will give us clear understanding that Jesus was actually teaching his disciples consigning words. Hallelujah. 
Firstly, I would like us to go into our key verse of the scripture reading, which is idle words. So what is idle words? The word idle is taken from the Greek, which means arigos. From there we get barrenness or barren, barren. We get useless. We get uh, lazy. We get uh, unemployed, inactive, free from labor. Then Jesus uses word there. So let's also define the word. Word is something or something which is uttered by a living voice. Something spoken by a living voice. It can be negative. Or positive. So, there Jesus uses two words there. One word there, but in the, te- in the Greek we have two terms for word. We have logos, which is the written word of God. And we have rhema, which is the spoken word of God. So there Jesus, in verse 36, Jesus uses rhema. But understand that logos is very important. With logos, through logos, we, un, we, we, we learn to know God, know his ways, his salvation, and his plans for mankind. Through logos, we receive rhema. So Jesus uses uh, rhema in verse 36 to highlight the importance of our spoken words. Are we together? He uses the word rema there. When he says idle word, the word is rema. He highlights the importance of our spoken word and to help us to understand our personality. That as the carrier of divinity, we are not meant to speak idle words. We are not meant to speak lazy words. We are not meant to speak uh, barren words. We are not meant to speak in active word or unemployed word or free from labor. That's mean your word has to be sent for an error. Hallelujah. So we are not meant to speak ordinary. Those words that you, you when you say, you say, I, 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 I'm not serious about it. In the kingdom that we belong to or the kingdom that uh, we are functioning from, word is very serious. Word is very serious. So you use your word wisely. Use your word wisely. By saying that Jesus was like, what he wants us to understand that our words are not just mere utterance. They carry uh, a, a, a spiritual weight and consequence. Are we together? So when you speak word, be conscious of what you want to say. That's why sometimes they will say, when you are angry, don't say something. Don't say anything. Hallelujah. There is power in your words. Are we together? There is power in your word. Jesus said that we were going to give account of every words, I do words that we speak on the last day. When he said this, that will help you to understand that you are not meant to speak wrong words. So when I was in my place of meditating on this word, that I'm going to give account of every idle word that I speak on the last day. So the Lord, the Lord brought illustration in my spirit just to show me the consequences of words. Then he said that when we plant seed, when we plant seed on the ground, that we wait for those seed to produce fruits. No matter how long it takes, that we wait for it. And whenever the uh, the seed, the the plant seed produces fruit, that is a judgment day of those seed because now the seed has produced something. When you plant corn, you are waiting for the uh, for to reap the, the the fruit. So the Lord said, it's like our word are like that. When we speak, we are sowing. We are sowing. Your word forms cloud. Until it gets to certain levels, then it starts to 
manifest. The, the, the Bible said in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, verse 3, it said that when the cloud is full of water, it empties itself. It's like our words. When it gets to certain levels, it began to manifest in your life. Are we together? You began to experience what you have spoken. So, like I, I said in, in the morning, uh, one day I was in, in my balcony, I was like, my son was playing. He's playing on the steps. So I was like saying, this, this guy will hurt himself. So the next thing I spoke into his life, I said to him, William, you are going to get hurt on these steps. So after, he said, no, daddy, no, no, then I left him. Not long enough, he started crying. He started crying. Then I, I, I came back to him. I said, what happened? He said he hit his uh, chain on the, on the steps. So I consoled him. Then when I get out, the, uh, the Lord said that, that I just got what I spoke in the life of my child. I just got what I spoke. I said, well, I said, Lord, but I just told him that he's going to get hurt. He said, no, that you speak that he's, he will be hurt. That I should say to him, stop what you are doing so that you don't get hurt. Hallelujah. Amen. So words are powerful. Your words are powerful. Did you know that the best part of your personality is your word? It's your word. The greatest gift given to us naturally is the ability to talk. The ability to talk. It's man's greatest natural gift given to him by God to be able to talk. Hallelujah. To be able to talk. Because your words determine the course of your life. Where you are going to go. How your life is going to be. The direction of your life. Whether you are going to be a success or a failure is all in your mouth. Hallelujah. Because we are made in his own image and his own likeness. Hallelujah. What did Jesus say about words? Jesus put premium on words. Yes, he did. He put premium on words. When we, let's turn our Bible uh, uh, to the uh, Gospel of John, chapter number 6, verse 63. John, chapter number 6. The Gospel of John, chapter number 6, verse 63. I'm reading for uh, New King James Version. He said, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profit nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. It helps us to understand something there. That the difference between the word of Jesus and the word of any other person is the last part. Understand that the words that you speak, they are spirits. Whether they are going to give life or death, it's up to you. Are we together? It's up to you. I'll show you just now. Jesus decided to speak life. So if you want to exercise dominion, learn to speak life in all situations. Let's turn our Bible to um, the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter number 18, verse 21. Chapter number 18, verse 21. Are we together? He said, death and life are in the power of tongue. And those who love it we eat its fruits. Death and life are in the power of tongue. And those who love it, we eat the fruits. We eat its fruit. Jesus wasn't going to uh, speak death. He chooses to speak life. 
He chooses to speak life. Yes, he chooses to speak life. He said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. A lot of us talk death all the time without knowing it. We talk death. We talk death to our finances. We talk death to our business. We talk death to our job. We talk death to our life, even to our children without realizing it. We speak death. Sometimes we even allow the circumstances, the worries of life, to dictate our words. Like the children of Israel in the wilderness, after the Lord has brought them out from the land of slavery, they, 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 they camp in, uh, uh, in the wilderness after two years that the Lord has brought them out. And the Lord said to Moses, get 12 men from, one, from each tribe to send them to scout out the land that I have given them. The Lord didn't say the land that I will give them. He said the land that I have given them. Send men to scout out. So after 40 days, those men came back. Numbers uh, uh, 13 verse 20 said, said, 26 said, that they brought word. They brought word back to them. So those 12, among those 12 men, two men brought uh, 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 positive reports. Why 10 men give them uh, uh, negative re uh, re uh, reports? But the children of Israel allow those negative results to dominate their life. They allow those negative results to create a reality in their life to the point that they begin to speak negatives. Begin to speak negative. Speak negative into their life, into the life of their children. These people forget, they forget that the Lord performed miracle when they came out of Egypt. In their present was Red Sea. Behind them was uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, Pharaoh and his army. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch forth your rod. There was miracle there. After they crossed the Red Sea, in the wilderness, when they were thirsty, they came across bitter water called Malon. The Lord performed miracle. It became a sweetest water. At the process, they were in the same forest and experienced miracle when rock brought out water for them to drink. The Lord provide manna for them. They forgot all that the Lord has done for them. Allow the words that they receive from uh, the, the, the ten men to create a reality in their life. Then they begin to speak negatives. Begin to speak negative. The Lord got irritated and called Moses. Said to Moses, how long will I endure with these people? After all I have done in their presence, after all the miracles, the signs that I have performed, they, 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 they still speak negatives. They still, they still talk wrong. He says, said to them, as long as I live, as they have said into my hearing, so will I do unto them. When you read down, you will find out that everything that they spoke about, they experience it. Many of them could not get into the promised land. Are we together? Many of them could not get into the promised land. The same thing happened to us. When we face challenges, when we face trials, we allow these present circumstances to detect our world, forgetting that we have experienced something worse than death, but the Lord see us through. The Lord brought us out of that situation. The reason why God performs miracles many a times or allow us to experience his goodness is that when we face some certain situation in our lives, we will remind God what he has done in the past. Whatever he has done in the past, he expects us to, to bring him into the future. Instead of saying, how, how will I go through this difficulty? Why this is happening to me? Why the Lord has left me? Why am I facing these challenges? You begin to say, Lord, I thank you that you have done it before. I know that this is an opportunity for you to do it again. 
I know you have done it before. It doesn't matter how it looks like. Remember that God called light out of darkness. In whatever dark situation that you are, you are able to call light out of darkness because you are made in his image. Hallelujah. The Lord is able to see you through. So sp stop speaking negatives. Hallelujah. Your words are power. Apostle Paul says something in the book of Ephesians chapter number 4 verse 29. He said, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. So it's your responsibility to allow corrupt words. It's your responsibility to allow the word that will build you up to come out of your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification, that is, what is good to build you up or build someone that hears whatever you are saying? Are we together? Did you know that your mouth was not given to you for only eating? To eat archers or with bread or pap and uh, chakalaka? No, that was not the main purpose that God gave us mouths. The purpose that God gave us mouth is for us to praise and worship him. In any circumstances, to praise and worship him. Thank him for what he has done in your life, what he's doing and what he's about to do. Worship him for who he is. Glorify him. The second thing that God gave you mouth is for you to shut the course of your life. To bring his presence in every situation. To exercise dominion with your mouth. Then the third reason why God gave us mouth is to be able to create. To use what to create things like him. Remember you are like him. To create things. To create things with your words. To create the situation, the life that you want to live with your words. That's why God gave you mouth. It's not just for eating. Take this serious. Take this serious. When I say your words, I don't mean your idea or your, your, your sense knowledge words. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, it says, we are bought with a price. It's a glorified God with your body and your spirit, which is God. If this means something to us, that we are bought with a price, if truly, if truly that we have been bought with a price, that means your life is no longer yours. Your life doesn't belong to you anymore. We are meant to live according to the ways and the knowledge of him who has bought us with a price. We are meant to live according to his ways. And one of the ways that he has given to us to advance in life is through his words. Is through his words. So if we have been bought with a price, let God's words be your words. We are talking about advancing in life through your words. So if you want to see more progress in life, if you want to continue to exercise progress or to experience progress in life, let God's words, who, him who has bought you, let his word be your words. Because the word of God is power. The word of God is authority. Hallelujah. The word of God is power. Hallelujah. Let God's word be your word. He said to Joshua, in the book of Joshua chapter number one, verse eight, he said, this book of the law, as in my word, shall not depart out of your mouth. That means keep talking my word, keep talking it, keep saying it. It shall not depart out of your mouth, but meditate on it day and night. Meditate on it. When you keep talking God's word, 
It will create a reality in your life. It becomes your lifestyle. No matter how circumstances look, it becomes your lifestyle. He said, when you keep talking my word and living my word, he said that then you, not God, then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. You, how? Through your words. When you meditate on it, it creates a reality. It influences your life. It brings life in every situation. Then you began to make progress in life. You began to advance in life. Hallelujah. You began to advance in life. Remember he said, we are exactly like him. As he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. Remember, God creates you in his own image, after his own likeness. In his image, he made you to look like him. In his likeness, he made you to function like him. So how does God function? God functions in the arena of words. He's a God of faith. So he functions in the arena of words. Hallelujah. He functions in the arena of words. I want us to look into uh, uh, Hebrew chapter number 3, number 11, verse 3. The book of Hebrew chapter number 11, verse 3. The Bible reads, it says, Through faith we understand that the word we are framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen, we are not made of things which do appear. The word frame there is katatizo, mean to mend, to repair, to arrange things, and to perfect things. So if your life is not going the way it's supposed to go, if it's not going in the direction it's supposed to go, because as a child of God, I say, where your life's supposed to go. But if it's not going in that direction, you use your words to frame. That's been to mend, to replace, to repair things, to arrange things, and to perfect your life through your words. Are we together? You arrange it through your words. You can do it because you are a child of God. You belong to him. You are the offspring of words. First Peter 1.23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which live and abide forever. So if you are born of, uh, of the word, you are word. Your life is supposed to be word itself. You are word in the flesh now. Because the Bible says, as he is, so are we. You are word. Are we together? You are words. So use your words right. In conclusion, in this season, learn to use your words wisely. Be conscious of the words that you speak. Make our time, even 10 minutes, 20 minutes, to speak word into the atmosphere. Speak things according to the word of God. Speak things. What are things? What are things? Speak things. You will be amazed how things will be falling in place in your life. Take this very serious. Take it very serious. And I leave you with this verse. As of Apostle chapter 20, verse 32. Apostle Paul say to, 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 to his disciples in Ephesus, he said, now brethren, I commend you to God and to the words of his testimony, which is able to build you up and give you inheritance among them which are sanctified. You see what, of, what the word of God will do in your life if you take God's word to be your word. He said that his word will build you up. The word of God is able to build you up spiritually, build you up physically, build you up mentally, build you up financially, build you up everywhere. So trust God's word and make God's word your word. As you begin to use words wisely this season, may the Lord bless you 
And may the Lord cause your words, the, the, your word that you have spoken to come into existence, that you will be able to experience God in another levels. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. God bless you. Shalom. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand on our feet, please.